Would you believe it if I told you that one of the world's most famous billionaires began his business career selling garbage bags? Mark Cuban, the investor, entrepreneur, and philanthropist, has had a wild journey from humble beginnings to become one of the select few members of the Billionaire Boys Club. The 65-year-old's immense fortune is said to be worth over $5 billion, but there was a time in his life when he didn't even have $100 to his name. Let's take a deep dive into the entrepreneur's crazy come up, one that spans over multiple decades in numerous businesses. Mark was born in 1958 to Norton and Shirley Cuban. His father was an automobile upholsterer, the son of a Romanian Jewish immigrant to the United States. You could argue that entrepreneurship runs in Cuban's veins, as his grandfather, on arriving in America, sold merchandise out of the back of his truck in order to feed his family. Mark grew up in Mount Lebanon, a working-class suburb of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and the future billionaire was business-minded from a surprisingly young age. In the fourth grade, he reportedly took to collecting baseball cards, but unlike most kids his age, Mark began bundling them together, selling them on the playground for insane markups. At the age of 12, Cuban stretched his entrepreneurial muscles even further and decided to make some extra cash, going door-to-door -door selling garbage bags. He tried his hand at shifting other products such as newspapers, but the youngster found the most success with postage stamps. Mark recalls how he bought a stamp for 25 cents and ended up selling it for $50. And it was at that moment, he says, that he knew he could do anything. By the age of 16, he had built a reputation as a moneymaker, and his younger brother Brian Cuban said in an interview with Bloomberg that one of their neighbors at the time entrusted his older brother with $5,000 to go trade with at a stamp auction in New York. Mark claims that his foyer into the stamp business taught him just as much as any business class he ever took. It gave him first-hand experience in the laws of supply and demand, pricing, and the timing of sales, and these valuable lessons would come in handy throughout the rest of his illustrious business career. Mark was smart with his money even then, and the profits he made from his stamp side hustle eventually ended up contributing to his tuition fees. He initially attended the University of Pittsburgh as a freshman, but after a year he decided to transfer to Indiana University to enroll in their undergraduate business school. Ever the hustler and forever restless, Mark ran a number of businesses whilst in Indiana, including teaching sorority girls to disco for $25 an hour and running a chain letter. Cuban had his sights set on running an even bigger business. In late 1979, after securing a $15,000 loan from an associate, he opened his own bar named Motley's. The bar was a huge success, and it quickly became the go-to spot in town. Mark was business savvy from the jump and utilized a business model where he owned 51% of the company. Despite never putting up any money of his own, his associate who invested in the bar was happy with this arrangement since Mark essentially built the business himself and was doing a damn good job of it too. Cuban went on to use this business model for a few of his following companies, always remembering the importance of majority ownership. Unfortunately, his first real thriving business would end in controversy after an underage girl reportedly won a wet t-shirt contest being held at his venue. Mark graduated in 1981 with a bachelor's in management, and in 1982, he packed his belongings into a beat-up Fiat and with just $60 in his pocket, drove to Dallas, Texas to seek his fortune. On arriving in Dallas, he moved into a three-bedroom apartment that he shared with five other men, and after a brief stint as a bartender, managed to land himself a sales job at Your Business Software, one of the first PC retailers in Dallas. The role wasn't all that glamorous, and his duties included opening the shop and sweeping the floor, as well as actually selling the software. The only problem was, Mark knew nothing about the products he was selling, but he decided the remedy to this was simple, some good old hard work. Every night after work, no matter how late he finished, Mark would stay up reading software manuals and experimenting with the PCs, educating himself on the products he was selling. He found that after extensive self-education, he had more knowledge on software than co-workers with degrees in the subject. After nine months at the company, he had become their top salesman, but it seems Mark learned the hard way that no matter how good you are at your job, bosses absolutely hate insubordination. The 24-year-old disobeyed his supervisor's orders to open the shop, opting instead to close a $15,000 deal. Mark thought that when he returned with the money, his boss would be ecstatic, but instead he was fired on the spot. 
This experience likely made the young man realize that he wasn't suited to having a boss, and rightly so. Shortly after being fired, with the help of some investors, he established Micro Solutions, a company that provided software, hardware, and training to businesses right at the dawn of the PC revolution. It was the perfect storm, and Mark was able to grow the business to over 30 million in revenue. By 1990, at the young age of 32, he made his first fortune, pocketing $2 million when the company was sold to CompuServe. The young man proceeded to treat himself to an early retirement, purchasing a lifetime pass with American Airlines. With the express purpose of traveling around the world to party and get drunk with as many people as possible. During this time, he dabbled in tech stocks, even starting his own hedge fund. But in 1995, his insatiable fire for business and entrepreneurship forced him out of early retirement and back into the business world. An old friend from college, Todd Wagner, approached Cuban with an idea, which little did he know would secure Mark a place amongst the wealthiest people on the planet. Todd's revolutionary idea was to use the internet to listen to sporting events from anywhere in the world, essentially reinventing radio for the internet era. This led them to establishing AudioNet, one of the first online streaming services ever. They went on to change the name to Broadcast.com, and in 1998, at the height of the internet boom, Mark decided to take the company public. On the first trading day, the stock soared 250%, setting a new record for the highest run-up of a newly issued IPO. Cuban has acknowledged several times the sheer luck of taking his company public at the height of the dot-com bubble. But that doesn't negate the years of hard work that led up to that moment. He expanded the content that the website broadcast, and in being the first website ever to stream a Victoria's Secret fashion show, Broadcast.com set a precedent for how huge online streaming could become. Millions tuned into the webcast, and it set a record for the most viewed event streamed on the internet at the time, less than nine months after the company went public. Mark and Todd approached Yahoo, convincing the tech giant that if they didn't buy them, they'd be missing out on one of the most lucrative opportunities the internet age had to offer. In April 1999, Yahoo acquiesced, acquiring Broadcast.com for a staggering $5.7 billion in stock. Of this number, Mark himself received a billion, cementing his membership in that exclusive club, all at the young age of 42. Within months of the buyout, Cuban protected his stock by purchasing puts and calls against his interest and began to cash out. When the dot-com bubble eventually burst, he was able to salvage most of his money due to this positioning. And this is just another example of his business-savvy mind. As anyone can imagine, the newly minted billionaire wasted no time splashing around a fair bit of cash, purchasing a 24,000-square-foot mansion and a $41 million jet. These might seem like extravagant purchases, but they pale in comparison to what he bought next. In the year 2000, the sports fanatic purchased majority ownership in an NBA team, the Dallas Mavericks, for an eye-watering price tag of $285 million. After this, the young billionaire star began to rise, as he became known for his brash courtside antics and entertaining PR stunts. His fiery passion for sports and business acumen allowed him to take the Mavericks from being one of the worst teams in the league to an insanely successful franchise, valued at over $2 billion 20 years later. Since acquiring billionaire status, Mark has participated in numerous successful ventures, including a vertically integrated media company. He's enjoyed cameos in various TV shows and even the WWE. And in 2011, not only did his beloved Mavericks win an NBA championship, but he also began starring on a little show named Shark Tank that would rocket his stardom into the stratosphere. Today, the 65-year-old billionaire can boast movie production and best-selling author on his resume, as well as multiple philanthropic ventures like the Mark Cuban Foundation and the Fallen Patriots Fund. He's lived an inspiring life, and you certainly couldn't script a more exciting come-up than his. From working-class beginnings to billionaire status. Not bad for a kid who used to sell garbage bags.